Hi guys, 2017, should I buy a house or not? Right, this is the common question that I've been receiving nowadays, even the recent years. So should I buy a house or not? Recently, I've searched on the internet that uh, on YouTube, there are many clips about the life behind living in the car and homeless. Some of them, like purpose of living in the car, not buying a house is for their habit and just out of curiosity, right? But some of them really don't have the money or they think that the housing prices is really high that they will go coming back down. So uh, one of my experience about housing prices is about you have to know the far ahead, the direction of the home prices that do they still have room to go up or do they still have room to come down? It's not your personal assumption and feelings, right? So there are three signals about if the housing has a bubble or even is going to burst right now. So if not, the two questions you have to ask today, is it a bull market? Or bear market is it an economy expansion or recession if it is still under expansion if you have money then you really don't have to wait especially if it's your first house you have to buy it right now if this is a recession sure you have to wait and maybe you have to rent and then save up the cash and until the housing prices drop a lot more than you purchase your own home so I'll put up the information and I'll share it with you guys. But of course, there are some or so many other reasons behind that you may have to consider. Maybe your lifestyle, whether you have accumulated enough money to buy one. So there are three signals that will show that the housing will bubble or not. First one is price to income ratio. So what is price to income ratio? Price to income ratio is the housing prices in average are over the average income ratio in the country. So let's say that my annual income is $100,000. So if the housing is 1 million, then the ratio is 10, which is really high. So if we have the reference that we know, or we all know that in 2007, this is a housing bubble in US and globally. So in globally, and especially in US, the price to income ratio goes up high as high as three, right? This ratio is three. But right now, it's even more scarier. Right now, London is 8.5, LA is 8.1, San Francisco, which is a really comfortable place to live, is 9.1. And all other places like uh, Vancouver is like nine. In Toronto, is going towards eight to nine. It's pretty scary. And in the housing, in the 2007, the housing, this ratio in Canada and US is three. And then the last one, I believe, is in the late 80s and 90s. The housing ratio, the housing to income ratio is only one point something to two, right? So you see the trend is um, the tolerance, the threshold that uh, the ratio is going higher and higher. So whether that it is um, definitely a warning that our income cannot really afford the housing prices, but is it going to be a trend? Maybe it will burst like at 20 in this decade. In the next decade, when your son or your grandsons, your granddaughters, the ratio may go as high as 40, then by then the culture is like earning all your income just for your grandson to have a place to live, right? But I believe, um, I, I'm not a big fan of this theory, right? Because it is a self-correcting adjustment going on in our ecosystem. So if the housing prices go too high, maybe there will be a startup, there may be a housing sharing scheme, something like that to pull back the housing prices back down to, uh, towards normal. But as of right now, we definitely say that is a warning sign. Some people said that is the money and the people from mainland China, the places they like to live is Toronto, Vancouver is the best, um, LA, San Francisco, or New York. So these are the places that may be as simple as capital coming in towards the country. That is why calling the housing prices is because of the money from China, but the, the income ratio is only because of the citizens inside the country. So maybe that's also the reason, but that's definitely the signal that we have to be careful of. The second one is housing debt to income ratio. So to make a long story short, in the Asia, in the Asian, in the east side of the world, there is a really, really big housing bubble went on in 1997. So according to housing bubbles, we are in the East, there's kind of the expert in avoiding debts, right? So in that year, when the bubble bursted before that, this ratio goes as high as 130% or more. So that means you're earning $10,000 but you are paying the mortgage for more than what you earn. So that's definitely 
something that we have to be careful of. But you say that how come that would happen, right? If that happens to me, I really avoid doing that. I really think that that's a bubble. But you cannot really put your shoes in until you are really living in the extreme situation with excitement and all these kind of things going on. You will think that oh, there's only one sentence you will think in your mind that if I don't buy any house right now, I would wouldn't able to buy one because this price will only go up. But not never come back down. So that is exactly how what it happened in the Asia. So right now in the Asia area, this ratio is really low. It's about 70%. Of course, there are still more some policies that in the among inside the countries that help this ratio to go down. For example, when you do mortgage, you have to have a market check, your income check, something like that. But uh, right now, US in 2007, there's a big housing bubble going on in the West. This time it's in the West 10 years later. So the ratio went up as high as 125%. So I'll ask you again in 2006 and 7, do you know or do you think there's any bubble in the housing market? The answer is you're not sure, but you will definitely not think that there's a bubble or it will burst. So that's kind of the market full of excitement that will really get into your mind that you think this is normal case. This is something that will happen in the future. So right now, the ratio in Asia, in Hong Kong, in other countries in the East, that's 70%. Right now in US is 99%. So uh, you have to really think about what's going on. Uh, so the US definitely some kind of signals going on in the US. So the first signal is a uh, warning sign. The second ratio is Okay, but according if you want to compare to 2007, that's a dangerous level is 125. Number three, home price to rent ratio. So what does this ratio mean? If this ratio goes up, that means the home price is higher, but the rent to cost is lower. When would it happen is when the home price is going up a lot faster, but the rental cost can catch up the home price. So you have to think that that maybe this shows that the home price is going a lot faster, but it's too fast that the rent cannot catch up. So the other way around, when this ratio drops, this means that the home price may be going down faster, but the rent stays the same or cannot catch up so that the ratio will go down. Of course, if it goes up, this is really a dangerous sign that the housing market may have bubbled inside. So the 2007, the ratio goes up as high as two right so back then you rather really rent a house than buy a house right so that should be a signal that we have to be careful of but right now we are at the 1.4 to 1.6 ratio right now so it is considerably okay but when you look at the chart the culture tends to be going to rent or never buy a house because the housing prices really go up a lot more. The ratio has a trend going up and up. So if that ratio is below one, which never happens, right? Why do you think? Because every single time it hits one, it will come back up. Let's say 1997, it hits one. You, this is a really, really golden time that you should buy a house. Although the news and media are all covering bad news about housing market, but you know that if this ratio hits one, you have to buy. Why? Because if it is below one, that means you're paying your rent, let's say $10,000. But if you pay the mortgage, it's only $5,000. What do you do? Will you rent a place or buy a house? You strike to buy a house for yourself. So that is the point that this is what the ratio is telling us. So there are three signals, hopefully, that will come to your mind that will help you on making decision whether to rent or buy a house, not just for this cycle, maybe for the other cycles up ahead in 10 years or 12 years ahead of your life. After all, this is your lifetime investment, just not a one-time or short-term investment, right? So for more education, prepare more English clips for you guys. If you want to watch more of the clips, please subscribe our channel and please leave me a comment of whether what should I talk about in my 20 years experience of failing, right? So I can share a lot of failing examples with you guys. So see you next time. Goodbye.